Hello and welcome to the coronavirus update for the 22nd of August 2020 where today we're mostly going to be looking at the resurgence of the coronavirus in Europe um, but before we do that we're going to take a quick look at what's happening with the rest of the world so we're at 22 million um, cases for the world so far and getting up for a million dead um, no real signs of this being over any time soon and that the average daily world cases is pretty much a maximum at the moment but even at that this can get a lot worse we're getting up for a million uh, dead worldwide um, although if you take a look uh, you know averaged over all the diff various different countries what you find is <clears throat> the average mortality rate of the coronavirus is about two percent which means for the world with about 10 billion people in it, 10% would be about a billion people, 1% would be about 100 million, so 2% would be about 200 million people. So you can see we're not even up to 1% of a sort of worst case scenario here. <clears throat> Hopefully we're never going to get there, but um, yeah, if we get away with 2 million dead, uh, so, yeah, 2 million dead, after all this is said and done, that's probably going to be um, job well done. I mean, this you you can easily add an, a zero to these numbers if things go badly. You know, I mean, like I said, there's no real sign that there's any end in sight here, uh, that it's under control in the world. And all you need is... You know, given that this is what 1% world infection looks like, uh, things can get a lot worse. In Australia, uh, not Australia, New Zealand is maybe a, a good example of this. They thought they were clear. New Zealand is an interesting scenario in that it's very isolated, very low population density. So they have, you know, islands are good for keeping diseases out. Um, uh, however... Uh, they had a resurgence. They had nine new confirmed cases, um, at which point, oh, you know, Trump called it a disaster. That uh, I mean, I, I, I still just don't get how this guy has any credibility. Anyway, let's hear what Trump had to say about this. New Zealand, they beat it. They beat it. It was like front page. They beat it because they wanted to show me something. The problem is big surge in New Zealand. So you know, it's. Uh, it's terrible. We don't want that. But yeah, so big surge in New Zealand of nine cases. Uh, and he said that on the same day that the U.S. had, I don't know, uh, 60,000-ish new cases. And he was condemning New Zealand for having nine. Um, anyway, um, right, so what do we got? There are uh, four, three countries with a million or so confirmed cases. There's the US, who's no end in sight. They're currently, if you believe these numbers, and I'm not so sure I do. In fact, let's deal with this first before we get on to the rest of the world. So um, the America cases going down sort of coincided with it being handed over to another agency to count they took it away from the cdc and trump insisted someone else do the counting and seeing as he was pushing for you know less key less tests means less cases and all that sort of thing <sighs> whatever um you know do you actually believe that these cases are genuinely declining like this well if the cases are declining like this you expect the numbers of deaths to decline likewise and if you take a look at the deaths they're not really declining so i'm not so sure i believe the um the i mean it didn't really matter in the end you know plus or minus factor two on these numbers but um yeah america is still cruising at the best part of a thousand cases per day so there's a 9 11 every three days anyway so that's america they're in the sixty thousand ish new cases per day level brazil not quite as much but you know they've not got as many people india uh you know continues to climb they're now rivaling america in terms of cases per day 
But again, you know, poor infrastructure in India probably means these are significantly underreported and there is no sign that this is in any way contained. Uh, Russia is the archetype of what I would consider fixed data to look like in that either they're smoothing this data themselves or something. Um, and right, let's go on to Europe because Europe is going second wave not big time, but um, it's looking bad, right? So, you, like us, us with America, you can probably make a sensible argument that the detection early on was poor. Um, yeah, you're maybe only detecting 20% of the cases early on, now you're detecting most of the cases. The practical upshot is this peak should be much higher than it is. Um, but even if you take that sort of thing into account, um, Spain is looking very bad. Um, UK is not too bad. Yeah, they're not going down, but um, not going up greatly either. France, eh, they look like they're spiking again. Uh, Italy is doing well. They're, you know, not going down, but not going up much. And, oops, Germany um, is also going up and where I am at the moment which and this is the crazy thing China is all the way down here and know whether you saw that China had this huge sort of um, <clears throat> celebration um, you know because they're what is it a month without a case or something like I said New Zealand shows that uh, this the, the virus can be dormant for an extended period of time so you, you're going to have to be so ever vigilant. Japan, yeah, surging again. But where, where was I after? I was after Czechia, who is as bad as it's ever been. So, um, yeah, a lot of things to not be happy about here. And, yeah, this is before you get on to... Yeah, you know, the traditional time that the respiratory diseases prosper is in winter time, and so far, yeah, you know, these things seem to have mostly prospered when it's been hot and humid. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. Give it a few months or so. Anyway, um, on some rosier news, I've been outside with the telescopes, um, doing some time lapses so this is me doing a time lapse of mars that's mars there that's one of the telescopes looking at it that's both telescopes tracking mars um so i did that for a whole night and uh yeah mars is good at the moment and it's going to get really good in the next couple of months so if you're all if you're looking at getting a telescope to look at planets now is kind of the time to do it and this is what I actually got on Mars. This was, um, it was superb seeing, right? N normally with the planets, you're almost always limited by the atmosphere. But even from the middle of a city, which is where I am here, where there's crap sky conditions for looking at faint objects, the atmosphere is quite still. Which means that you can get some really quite decent planetary observing done. And so I actually got to see the rotation of Mars. You even see the rotation of elements of the polar ice cap, which is kind of fun. You know, there's this little bit here that you actually get to see on the polar ice cap. And that was, just so you know, almost sunrise. Um, literally just before sunrise when I, I recorded that last one. So, yeah, I'll be making a video about that on uh, the Thunderfoot channel uh, in hopefully in the next day or two. So, something to look forward to. Okay, so I hope you found that useful and maybe kind of fun. Um, and, yeah, see you next time. Thanks for watching.